Hello Luna lovers, Claire again here and now we're on to fixing the head. Um, I'm sewing the head rather than fixing it because we've not made a mess of it, don't worry. And we've got our two pieces of our head fabric, so we've put the noses together so that they're matching and they're mirrored pieces. The pin from the previous video you'll remember just marks which is the right side of the fabric for me, so I've left those on until I'm actually ready to stitch. Um, and what we've, we've got the um, little dark cut out which is where the ears are going to go so that's all fine so if you want to get your, your head pieces together and let's get stitching so what I want you to do is just put your heads together head pieces together right sides together and matching up the um, edges if you then take out your pins because we don't need those once we've got those right so hold those tight together and what we're going to do is we are going to sew around the head and this is the same way um, that I've done in my alternative head video, which sounds a bit of a strange title, but um, it was just a different way of putting the ears in that I um, chose to do, and it worked really quite well. So that's why I did that first video, which has started me off really on doing all of the lunar videos. So just pop these um, halves together. They should fit there or thereabouts. Just trim them back if they're not quite right. There's a little bit of pleating there, that's fine. Okay. So what we're going to do with these then is we're going to start at the neck edge and we're going to sew in, we're going to put our needle down in the work and pivot and then we're going to sew round the nose and round the eyes, the forehead and stop at the ears and reinforce our stitches there. We're going to reinforce our stitches when we start as well. Again, then we're going to cut our threads and we're going to start here. So backwards and forwards to reinforce here, round the back of the head, down towards the neck, pivot and then go out again to the neck and then stop and start. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get my machine all set up and ready to go. And we're using the same seam allowance that we've used all the way through to be consistent with our lunars. And hopefully you can see. And then just try and make sure that you mimic the um, shape of the face as well, because that is what's going to give your Luna her character. Again as before, use your needle down function or hand crank your machine if you need to, just to be able to get you around those corners without too much effort. We're just trying to smooth out those curves because sometimes they're just a little bit too too steep. So as you can see I'm just lifting my presser foot slightly and it just releases the pressure on the fabric which then allows it just to curve nicely out. This curve here is gentle enough just to sew. There's a little bit of tension at the end there so just lift the needle up and it'll just release that tension for you. And I'm going to stop start on the end here. Oh, needle up. Take those threads off and then rejoin again. Stop start and forward should I say and follow the back of the head around trying to keep your seam allowance as consistent as possible all the way through so back to the neck point again needle down pivot and then out through the neck and just reinforce at the bottom just there because that's where we're going to be stuffing so as you know already we need to have that reinforced find my snips I had to have a quick tidy up of my sewing room, it looked like a bomb had hit it, so um, I do do find I get quite messy when I'm creating. But I do know where everything is, generally speaking, it's not often I lose anything. Okay, so here we have, and hopefully you can see, we've started here, we've so pivoted there, we've sewn around the edges, and then back around here again. Now, because these seams are curved, you've guessed it, we're going to clip these seams. And so what I'm going to do is get my pinking shears, which I like as nice and easy. The first thing we're going to do though, is we're going to do a little clip in through the threads across into the point there where the neck shaping is. So you've got like quite a, a steep chain, so that's the point we pivoted at. So I've just snipped through, not through the threads, but just close enough so that we can get that um, turned round nicely. And then we're then going to, it doesn't matter where you start or where you stop, just gonna trim those bits off. Try not to get, take too much off. Just need to reduce the bulk really and just allow that seam just to 
pop out when we want it to. And then we'll do the same on, I've done the cut that already, so let's just take this background here again. And in some, if I show you at the end how much I've actually taken off this, you'll see that it's not actually a horrendous amount. So if I pop that on there. So just small bits really, just enough just to make it um, pop through the right side. So then what we're going to do then is just pull the sides apart on this um, top dart here really. Now I know that when your hands, when your um, machine set Sarah says in the book to um, insert the seat, the ears by sewing the, the ear in first, then joining the two halves of the head together. But this is just feels far more intuitive to me. So we've got our ears. And in some ways, it doesn't matter which way around we put them. Remember, we made these in an earlier step and we've joined them together. That's just so they just sit together nicely and they stay the right way around. So it doesn't matter whether we put them in that way or that way because they are reversible. So we're going to poke these up through the neck and fold them in half while you're doing that bit. Just to get them through there, through the biggest part because when they come through here, we're going to rearrange them as well anyway. Okay. So what we're looking for is the middle of the ears to fall onto the centre seam that goes around the head. So just do a little bit of fiddling round and you're gonna just have to just maneuver them and just feel your way with them, just to make sure that they're okay. And just pull them through just a little bit so you've got something to grab hold of. So mine aren't even at the moment. Oh, going off camera a bit. So as I say, let's just pull those together like that. So what we want to make sure is that they don't dip down in the middle. So what we're going to do now is those 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 seams are together there in the middle of the ears. Look, can you see? And then the, the halves of the fabric are either side. So just make sure they're nice and even. It's going to dip down because the edge of the ears is straight and the dart is going to be curved slightly. So don't worry about that. Just make sure that in the center that they're straight and then that should be fine. And then we're going to just put a little pin in there to hold it steady. Or you can use one of those little clips that we used before. The binding clips are very e useful to use. Okay. So just got two pins in there. It's just holding that together. So what we're going to do now is just being mindful of the curve, you can't see it very well here, maybe this side you can see a little bit, it just dips down slightly, so make sure you start with a little bit of a curve and come across. And we are going to go backwards and forwards to reinforce where we stop and start. going to reinforce those, in, especially if you've got a child who might hang on to those and fling bunny around, then we might need those to be um, reinforced. There we are. I've just sewn it just at a, a slight curve on there. Okay, and then we are going to turn Luna's head around. Just nice and gently. We don't want to pull it out of shape. Their ears do make a nice little anchor point to hold on to. And then just smooth these seams out with your finger. These are nice little curvy seams, make sure our little nose comes out nicely. Down to her neck. And then just go round to the back of the head as well and just smooth those out, those seams out. And here we've got our head. So what we've got, and we've got that seam right in the middle. So it, it would be as if we've um, sewn that the way that Sarah suggested, they're, so they're together nicely. The ears are nice and straight, as you can see in standing up, so that's all good. And so now we are going to get our knitting needle, trusty knitting needle, and we're just gonna just run our knitting needle along those seam edges, just to push, make sure that, that those edges are just pushed out really neatly because the face, unlike the rest of the body, which will hopefully will be covered in clothes so you won't have your naked lunars. Um, with the head, we absolutely want that to be pushed out so that all those seams are sitting nicely. We could do it a little bit more when we when we stuff it. Okay, so next next stage then is to stuff our lunar head.
and here she is taking shape. So I've just put half the stuffing into Luna's head at the moment, she's still quite squidgy, but as you can see, she's just starting to take shape nicely. A little nose needs pushing out a little bit more, so we're going to use the rounded end of the of the knitting needle just to make sure that we've got that all nicely poked through. And stuff, pushing the stuffing in and compacting it is just the other thing that we just need to do. Um, I don't know which stage we start to apologise to Luna for, for pushing and poking and pulling her around a bit, but we're getting very close, I think, to that stage because she is starting to take on her face and her her personality. So yeah, we've just got a little bit of a pointy nose there, so I just need to work on that, but I'll hopefully pull that out with a bit more stuffing. So let me put the other half of the stuffing in and we'll have a look and see how she's doing. Okay, I've now finished stuffing her face and I'm happy with the amount of dimension that we've got there. I've stuffed into the cheeks as well because I wanted to have quite a nice soft face. Uh, made sure her forehead is, is nicely rounded. And as you can see, we've still got the little neck flap opening. Now I have stuffed her really quite firmly because I want that, I know, I know that's deliberate. But what I want you to do with this little bit of the neck flap here is I want you just to tuck that in as well. So kind of tuck it in on, its si on itself into the sides of where um, you were. Try not to get stuff in behind it if you can help it. Just keep it flush to the, to the walls of the rest of her head. Okay, so you should end up with something like that, if you can see. So, so the actual bit where we pivoted is now going to be the bottom of her head, if you like. And that little section that was um, at the right angle on the... Let's see if I can find... Oh, this is on the mouse, but um, that, those little pointy bits there are what I've... On the template, turn it around so you can see better. Those two bits there are what I've now just pushed up inside the head so that it's flush. OK, so we've got to work out now what we're going to do about eyes and there's all sorts of things. There are safety eyes you can buy. Um, there are buttons. I've used little buttons before and they work really nicely. Um, or you can or you can embroider those on a little bit of felt sometimes. And you've got to be aware of what your Luna is going to be, whether she's going to be a gift for somebody or whether she's just going to sit on a shelf as a decorative item. So. For my, in this case, this one's just going is going to be a gift, but I know it's going to be a gift to an adult, so it's not going to be at risk of being chewed. Well, I hope not anyway. Um, so, um, yeah, so with um, this Luna, I'm actually going to audition some little eyes, um, some little buttons for eyes for her. So what I'm going to do first is choose two black pins, and this is where we do start to apologise to Luna because we're going to just be sticking her in with some pins at the moment. And what you need to do is kind of approximate where you think you would like the eyes to be. Now you're trying to get it so that it's symmetrical. I use these little glass headed pins, which are very useful. They don't look quite even. And there are, I mean, there are going to be all those people on there who say, um, oh, that's not bad for a first try actually. Um, there are all those people out there who say that um, if you um, indent them slightly as well, that gives a little bit more shape to the um, eyes there. And also the um, where you position them. So again, if you come down here, sometimes you can see, but it gives it a slightly different look. Don't know if you can see her there. So that's a slightly obviously they need to be even. So you've got to be be careful with what you're doing. So that's a slightly different oh, lopsided look. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can get this right. Okay, so that's better. So yeah, so we can have a look at that and see how that's looking. So you can then try and push those in. I prefer mine a little bit higher, I think. But this is just one of those things. And don't feel, be afraid to just sit with it for a couple of days and just to see how you think that she might look. Um, once I've got the eyes in roughly the right eye or place, then I'm going to look at using some of these little buttons. And I've got... Some little love hearts, don't know if you can see that one. There's a little love heart there, I've used those before. I've got a little flower here. And I've got a little black love heart as well, because black shows up very nicely. Oh, if I can get a hold of it for you. I'll put them out of the way so I didn't knock them anywhere, and of course now I can't pick them up. Little love heart. And I've also just got some very little round circles. So again, if you look at, there'll be, there'll be um, ways to 
YouTube, um, sorry, to search YouTube for little um, knots you can use, like little French knots. So if we just use um, for the eyes, so if I just take that out there and try and find where I had her eye before, we can see all of a sudden we've got a much rounder, flatter looking eye. It's quite small though, but quite dainty. Let's now try a little love heart and see how that looks. And this is where, sorry Luna, but we need to get you looking really pretty. So that doesn't look too bad, especially she's in quite a delicate uh, colour and, it, um, and they're slightly aqua, but they do match inside the ears. So they look quite nice and I think I'm preferring that size rather than this really small um, circle. Let's take that off for a minute. Let's try the blue flower and see what we think about this one. Oh, that's quite sweet. Little blue flower looks nice. Shows up a little better. Let me just put the other one of that one on. I will just try the black love heart as well because that does suit my thoughts for the recipient as well. So those look quite nice and especially they're a little bit indented as well. Maybe you're shouting at the screen at me saying which ones you prefer, which is fine. And sometimes making a choice, a design choice, is the hardest bit of everything, isn't it? Especially if you're on your own and there's nobody else to ask. Yeah, I think the black just looks a little bit too harsh, although it's the love heart on it. And that's the blue flower. I think I'm going to go with blue flowers. I think that's what is what is floating my boat today. And I'm going to indent those slightly as well. Maybe slightly further apart. And again, this is where we're going to start and try and get the placement of them right as well. Oh, that's cool. oh, it's a little bit cross-eyed now with those black bits in, doesn't she? But by the time I pull those in, it'll pull it in a little bit closer together anyway. Right, I'm going to go with those blue flowers and I'm just going to get some thread. I'm going to get some blue thread that matches the eyes and then that will be um, what I'll use. I do want to use it double and you do need something quite strong, but an ordinary dressmaking thread should, should be fine for that. So, so just, you, what you're trying to do now is make sure that your ears... Sorry, your ears. Your eyes are straight, so we could measure down to each ear from the eye. That would give us a good reference point and then measure across to the centre seam. So we'll probably do that just to show you how to do that, which will then help us put those together. But let me just go and get my needle threaded because now we've chosen that we're going to have those lovely blue flowers. Then we can move it forward. OK, so I've got my seam gauge here and I've got Luna's head. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to measure down from the centre of the two ears to the centre of the button. We've got four and a half there. And then I'm going to do the same this side as well, four and a half. That's slightly lower. So as I say, we can just do this at just a slight angle, four and a half to the centre of her flower ear. Oh. Can you see what I'm doing here? Just measuring it down. So I'm using that point there as my reference point. And the centre of the flower, oops, is four and a half. And the centre of the flower there is four and a half. Now from the centre seam, two centimetres and two centimetres. So I'm happy that that is equal now. So that's what we're going to go with for Luna. You might not look it on the screen and obviously ne the neck edge and what have you all made plays a difference and her ears standing straight. One just looks slightly higher than the other but it might just be the stuffing that needs moving around because on the measurements they definitely do do measure up. Okay, so now you've got to be careful because when you're using your, um, you've got to have a needle that's small enough to go through the holes in the buttons that you're using, if you're using buttons. And also I want to have the two holes, oops, 
the two holes for the eyes, obviously the pins through one of them, I want those to be straight across. So I don't want those to be one up, one going north to south and one east to west. We want those, those lines going the straight way. And I'm going to have those going across. And when we're using our, we've got to be able to push our needle through from the inside to bury the knot, but not so far that we um, then lose the needle inside Luna's head because obviously that's not going to be ideal either. So let me just move this light slightly. So what we're going to do now is we've got our, our needle as long as long and thin one as you've as you've got to be able to to do the eyes, and we are actually going to just go in just below the first eye. And we're going to go across to the other side. So you need a straight needle for this in order to do this. And we just want to find the first hole on the first eye. So if you can see, that's just going through there. Now that is going to just leave, I just leave a, a tail and your knot on this side. We're going to cut that off in a bit once we've anchored these eyes on, but that's just what we're going to do just to start it off. Make sure you've got your eye going the way that you want it to go. Loosen off your um, pin just for a second or two. Oops, I was not going to move, so let's just do that. Okay, make sure they're going straight. And then we're going to go straight across and through to the other eye. And we're aiming to come through one of the other holes on the other eye. It can take you a few goes, so just be just be aware of what we're trying what you're trying to do. Do not try and do this after a glass of wine. It ends in tears, believe me. Okay. So I'm just trying to feel, I can feel the back of the button with the end of the needle. That's coming out on my finger now, so it's we're close, but not close enough. Oh, come on, Luna. You want your eyes on? So close. Okay, so I've put that through. I think it might just be the angle of the button. So let's, I've got the needle through. So let me just feed the button properly onto the needle and it might just be the angle. Oops. It is fiddly folks. So just, just give yourself some time and some patience. You might do it the first time, you might be a wizard doing this and have no problems at all. I can feel the back of the button. just come through because I know we're in the right vicinity and then feed the button onto the needle instead Let's see if we can do that so I'm trying not to lose my original position there we go okay so I'm going to push on the other side of the needle and it'll come through so that's now secured this one in place and now what we need to do is make sure we've got them both going the same way for the holes in the buttons and then take your needle out without, your pin out without altering the orientation of your eyes. And then we're going to go across and find the hole in the other one. It doesn't matter which one. Okay, and we're just going to put just a little bit of pressure on those eyes. Just a little bit of, you can see it's just pulled them in slightly. Still got the knot there, that's fine, don't worry about that. And then we're going to go in through the other hole and then out on the other side of here. Once you've got this, this sort of like pathway, if you like, between the two organized, it's not so bad. Just keep checking that you're happy with where you've got your eyes as well and that she's looking how you want her to. She's looking quite sweet. She just look different when you've got her nose on as well. So it's not the final story. Let's just keep doing these needles through. A little bit of a pull. Let's give her face some 3D definition a bit more. Oops, that's too high. And what we're looking to do is put through quite a few different stitches into here. Just, just, just you know, repeat, repeat, repeat stitches really because the more that we do that, then the less chance there is of them just coming randomly undone. Oh, 
Sorry if this is driving you nuts just watching what's happening. Okay. And once we've got to a point where we're happy with the amount that we've got on the stitches and how and how she is, what you can do then is you can snip the thread that you've got holding on so very close to the button. So that's nice and neat. And then if you just put a little bit of pressure on the on the knot that we've got coming out of a cheek where we started off, we can just snip that off. I'm just pressing on the stuffing slightly. Just be very careful that you don't maim your lunar in the process. Do you see those threads? And then as I release off there, look how it just disappears into the work. So you won't see that at all then. So there we have our Luna's eyes. They're all ready and on there now. So they're looking lovely. Just spread a stuffing round if you want to. So we'll move on to the nose next. Okay, so we're going to do the little nose now. So if we have a look on the book here we can see that Luna has a little triangular satin stitch nose and that's what we're going to try and recreate. Now because I've got quite a lot of pink on mine and mine's going to be that way then I've got a few little pinks to try. So well this one's a little bit of a beigey pink which is similar to what Sarah's got. Now that looks quite nice on there. Against that, that linen, that um, natural coloured linen. Not too pink, but not too brown, so that's one possibility. We've also got this one here, which is quite a nice dusky pink, really. That matches quite nicely with her ears as well, the inside of her ears, so we're trying to match that up as well. Got a bit of fluff on it. Um, so that's a really good option. Not going to be too too strong, but quite nice and neat. That's that's a strong contender. I think I prefer that one to the other to the other one. This one's a little bit peachy, I think, for my liking. So I think that's going to be a little bit too dissimilar to the um, in, inside of the ears. And then this one here is again on those brown tan tones. I've just cut these little cardboard flosses out. So these are just all DS DMC threads, I think, that I've just got in my stash. Doesn't want to unfold anyway. That's that's that colour onto there. I think for me, I'm going to go with this dusky pink one here. I think that one's going to pick out the colours in the clothing that she's going to wear as a ballerina quite nicely. So in the book, it says to use three strands of floss. So I'm going to need too much. So let's do that. So with these as well, embroidery flosses, they come on a on a skein, so they come on a on a on a long tie. And if you just press on the top, it should just split the, the fibres for you. And we're just looking to get three. And what they say is if you have tried to do this on screen before and then got more tangled up. So if you just pull one first, then generally they come out very nicely. And then we'll lie them together. So there we go. We've got, see I tried to pull more than one. There's two. Well, fingers and thumbs today. And then, let's get that one there, that's three. So once we've got those together, we're going to put the ends together. One, two, and there's our third one. They've got a nice little pearly sheen to these as well, which will be quite nice, I think, whilst we're... These. And I've seen all kinds of different little mouths for Luna. So just do whatever you, you like. I'm just showing you one way. It isn't the only way by any stretch of the imagination. Let's see how good I am at threading my needle on camera. So I just folded the threads over the needle and then pulled them off through, uh, holding them tight. Let's see if I've got all three. And I have first time. Well, that was good. Well done, Claire. Okay, so we're going to do our quilters knot again. So we're going to hold our threads over the top of a needle to cross three wraps, one, two, three, and then hold onto the needle as we push it through with our other hand. Oops, not too tight. And then just pull it along and we end up with a nice little knot on there. Okay, so we're going to try and do um, her nose. Now her nose on the, on the box comes right just at the top of here. And if we find the pattern, see if the pattern piece has a, her nose on there for us, because again, this is all part of her character. There's pattern pieces. Well, 
mean it's got her nose ah right so luna hasn't got her nose marked on there whereas wilhelmina woodmouse has got hers marked on oops sorry you can't see so um wilhelmina Wood woodmouse has got her nose marked on there but luna hasn't on her so we've got some artistic license let's see what we can do then so let's do the same thing as we've done before. Let's come through under her cheek and we're going to do a couple of stitches in place first off underneath where we think the nose is going to be just to anchor our threads down. Oops, come on. So just going to come out in, so leave that just down here and we can get rid of that the same way shortly. Let's just do a couple of little stitches underneath just that we know we're going to be covered by the satin stitches going from east to west And just see how we get on with those. Okay, it was a little bit low to me, but we'll so we'll start a little bit higher. So let's just go through. Sorry, my friend's just waving to me through the window. So I'm going to come out here. So I'm about half a centimetre away from the edge. And I'm just going to go in across the other side about a half a centimetre as well on a level and then the needle is going to come back out just one thread away from where we started and that's how we're going to do her nose we're not going to pull it too tightly because we don't want her nose to be indented we want it to be all these little threads to be lying really neatly and if they start to cross over just use your needle and just smooth them out make sure you don't come in too far too quickly And here we've got her nose just starting to form. And we're coming in on a bit of a triangle, so I've gone a bit low with that stitch. So let me just come back and just fill that in. Because that one will still lie quite nicely over the top. And then I can come down just slightly below that one. So you're just trying to come in, and those first few stitches do actually just sort of give you a bit of a, a runway to aim for. Being quiet now aren't I because I'm concentrating don't pull in the stitches too tight we don't want her to be have a nose a tight nose and just gently just keep coming down one stitch at a time so that's where we are at the moment I think she's looking okay little sweetie Coming together. My cousin Dawn says sweetie all the time. It's very endearing. And I know she'll watch this video at some stage. She's slowly working her way through all of my videos, bless her. I love her very much and we're just like sisters. So, one more stitch maybe. Okay. So there's my Luna's nose. I hope you can see this is just a thread hanging down at the moment. So once you're happy that you've got her nose just how you want it to be, what I want you to do is I just go backwards and forwards underneath those satin stitches, north to south, because what you're actually going to be doing is just securing that thread end. So just go up and down. Under, behind, don't, don't pull it tight. I'm just going through the fabric of your, the, the face and down into the bottom of the stitches in the same place, but not pulling it tight because these will just sit over the top here. We can just smooth these over with our needle and just stuff it a little bit more if we need to because we've still got the neck opening available to us as well. That's why we do this before we put the head on just to make sure that we've got everything as we want it to be. And then once we're happy that we've got those stitches all nice and neatly tied in and they're not going to come undone, then we can again pull down and towards where we put the thread, the knot originally under the needle. Push through on the nose and it'll just let you just take that out. And as you can see, Hopefully, we've got a nice little neat nose without any knots. 
and then what I want you to do is just put a little bit of pressure on your thread and then as you just snip it it'll just disappear into Luna's head and if for some reason let's cut this one a bit long it doesn't quite disappear at first your thread can you see that one sticking out just take your needle or a pin and just put it into the fabric near where um, the knot is and then just sweep your needle one side to the other and then just take your needle out and it'll just push those threads in for you and you'll never know they were there. So there we go, we have one finished lunar head and then our next job is to fit this onto her body so let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> 